Welcome inside the ACU TV or studio. I'm Nathaniel Chisholm alongside Connor Mullins. Our top stories this week include a look into ACU theaters, the light in the piazza, opening weekend for ACU baseball, and track and field successful appearance at the WAC Indoor Championship. This is the Optimist Newscast. Last weekend, the Department of Theater opened the musical The Light in the Piazza in Folks Theater. Optimist Sheridan Wood has more on the production. Cast and crew of ACU Theater are hard at work preparing for the opening of Light in the Piazza, a musical about love and forgiveness. Michaela Lugafet, stage manager for the show, says the cast and crew have been working since winter break to bring the show to life. It's been really fun because we just finished Wet Tech, so being able to watch all of the pieces moving and the things that we've worked so hard to bring together finally coming and making this uh, work of art. The show is set in 1950s Italy, where a mother and daughter are vacationing. The story revolves around two romantic love stories, one fresh and new, the other worn and bitter. Casey Humphrey, playing the role of Franca, says the show teaches the audience lessons in the seasons of love in relationships. Um, and so I'm hoping that audiences take away from this that no matter where their relationship at, is at with anybody, it's worth work and it's worth um, fixing. Um, and that no matter what season of love they are in, it's important. Light in the Piazza opens on February 17th at 7.30 p.m. in Folks Theater and closes on February 26th. Tickets are available to the public for $25 and $20 for students. I think the show is such a beautiful representation of what it means to love someone um, and what it means to love someone no matter where you are in life. For The Optimist, I'm Sheridan Wood. The musical has two more showings on the 25th and 26th, and tickets are available for purchase at acu.universitytickets.com. ACU Black Student Union has been holding events for the community throughout the entirety of Black History Month. The kickoff event took place on the first of the month as a joint event with University Park. Other events included partner chapels and a student favorite, a silent disco. Upcoming events include a movie night at the Paramount this Friday, a Black-owned business fair and showcase on Saturday, and ending the month with events with a church service at Chapel on the Hill at 10 a.m. on Sunday. For more information on upcoming events, check out ACU emails and the ACU event calendars. The annual Film Fest Gala is quickly approaching, set to take place on April 7th. This year marks its return to the Paramount Theater. Optimist Carrie Johnson has more details on the upcoming event. ACU Film Fest plans to return to the historic Paramount Theater for its 18th annual Film Fest Gala. This comes after the student organization was unable to hold the festival in its usual venue due to the COVID-19 pandemic. According to Film Fest director Katie Maxwell, the organization is excited to return to the Paramount. The Paramount's been uh, closed quite a bit over the last couple of years for obvious reasons, and so if, if for students who have never had an opportunity to go to the Paramount and see a film. It's a really special venue. Each year, Film Fest gathers students across all departments to make short films that make their debut at the annual gala. Awards are also presented and student filmmakers receive valuable feedback about their work from judges that span across the TV and film industries. Lauren Ramsey is one of those student filmmakers and she encourages any student who is interested in filmmaking to find a way to get involved. If anyone's even thinking about wanting to make a film, I absolutely recommend you try to do it because I had never really thought about actually following through with it. I always just had this idea lingering in my head, but I think I really would have really regretted it if I had never done Film Fest. Despite Film Fest inching closer and closer, there are plenty of opportunities for students not involved in Film Fest, but are interested to be plugged in. All they need to do is reach out to the organization. There's always an opportunity to get involved. It's not too late to get involved. So um, if you are interested in being a background actor, if you're interested in helping with costuming, if you are interested in just showing up and being a volunteer for that the day of, we would love to talk to you. The 18th Film Fest Gala will take place on Thursday, April 7th at 7 p.m. For The Optimist, I'm Carrie Johnston reporting. Sing Song is in full swing with practices beginning last week. The annual production is to be held at the Taylor County Expo Center on April 1st and 2nd. Optimist London Gray took an inside look at rehearsals so far. It's 9 o'clock at night and pockets of singing can be heard around campus. 
Sororities, fraternities, and class acts are starting to prepare for Sing Song, ACU's iconic a cappella singing competition. Senior class act director Jackson Scott says Sing Song is a season of community and ritual. It's really the time where most of the student body can come together and do something, so it's really valued tradition. Some groups will be practicing late into the night, three days a week. But hard work doesn't mean no play for Gata Logistics Director Kaylee Bates. Being in an act with all my sorority sisters um, means that three times a week I get to spend multiple extra hours with them doing what we love. Bates says it's important to practice group dynamics and diction to get the highest scores in the competition. SIGI director Isabella Dumo says efficient practice starts with sound leadership. Also getting a really good team together and being able to use delegation. Don't try and make your weaknesses your strengths. It's not going to work. Scott says he looks to start practices with the intentions of having a good time. I think I'd rather all my participants be um, excited that they had fun at practice rather than um, you know, have a bad time and learn everything. With Moody still under construction, Sing Song will be held in the Taylor County Coliseum. The venue change creates some unknowns, but Bates and Gata are staying optimistic. We're not really exactly sure what we're getting ourselves into, but we're working with what we have and we're going to do the best that we can. Dumo says that the new location won't have much of an effect on the Siggy's performance. The more details that we find out, we realize like there's really not that much that's going to be different than a regular sing song in Moody. Sing song practices are starting off on the right note, with participants focused on competing in April with little complications. For The Optimist, I'm London Gray. Up next, ACU basketball went up against Sam Houston in two exciting games, and baseball held their opening weekend. Connor Mullins has more. Thanks, Connor. Nathaniel. Wildcat baseball started their season with a double header on Friday. Wildcats struggled in the second game, losing 7-4 after back-to-back three-run innings by the North Dakota State University Bison. The Wildcats did see a highlight with the first home run of the season, coming from sophomore infielder Brett Hammett in the second inning. Matters got worse for the Wildcats as the team went scoreless in the third matchup, losing 4-0, giving the Bison the series lead 2-1. Coming into Sunday afternoon, the team needed a win to tie the series, but fell to NDSU during a high-scoring 10-7 game. Head coach Rick McCarty said this, this about the team's wild pitching. That wasn't what it's been looking like. Uh, I don't know what the, what the dynamics were in that. You know, a lot of new on the mound. Um, stuff's there. Location wasn't. So we'll, I think we'll figure that out. I, I don't know that... that there's any earth-shattering thing we've got to change just to let guys get more comfortable in those roles. But. The Wildcats now look to their biggest home game of the season, Michigan State, this Friday through Sunday. Softball started Friday with what seemed like would be an extremely successful weekend at the UNT tournament and didn't. In the first two games, the Wildcats won 4-3 against Nevada and then 4-0 against Colorado State. Saturday didn't go near as well with the team barely beating Colorado State 3-2 and losing their first game of the tournament to UNT 3-1. The team had one more game after and lost 2-1 to, to Nevada. The next matches will be at the Hawaii tournament in Honolulu, Hawaii this Thursday through Saturday. The men's and women's basketball teams played Sam Houston this past Thursday with a woman hosting in the Teague Center. The game was an all-around team performance with Jamie Bonarens, Bella Earl, Sarah Griswold, and Tatum Barber all scoring double digits. After the first half, the Wild scored 42 to 36, giving the Wildcats a much-needed lead. The team forced a season-high 26 turnovers, and Sam Houston had seven players with at least three fouls, giving ACU the advantage. The second half was a similar story, with the team scoring another 46 points while holding the Bearcats to just 35. This 88-71 win gave the team good momentum going into the last weeks of the season. The next game will be at 7 p.m. on February 24th against Lamar University in Beaumont, Texas. The game will be broadcasted on ESPN+, and the men will play at the same time here in Abilene and also on ESPN+. That's all for this week's Optimist Newscast. I'm Connor Mullins. And I'm Nathaniel Chisholm. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.